Hey everyone, I decided to make a really simple track using the AC track tools, just so I can walk you through the process step by step. For this one, I'm using the Blender GIS add-on to get the terrain. It's not the most accurate reference, but it's free and easy for anyone to use, so it's a good starting point. In this video, I'll focus only on the Blender part of the workflow. I won't be covering the Chaos Editor or the folder structure for Assetto Corsa just yet. That's something I'd like to dive into in a future video once I wrap my head around it a bit more. Alright, let's jump into Blender and start building. Alright, let's start by grabbing our reference terrain using the Blender GIS add-on. I import the base map, elevation data, and open street map roads. Next, I delete the roads I don't need and merge the points by distance. After that, I move the line above the terrain surface and convert it to a curve. I also convert the terrain to a mesh so I can apply all its modifiers. Then I rename both objects, copy them into my AC Tools blend file, and place them under the AC Terrain object. To stay organized, I make a new collection for all the original objects. Before hiding it, I duplicate the AC Terrain and copy the modifiers from the original road setup to the new one. Don't forget to assign the new objects to all the modifiers properly. Now I disable the shrink wrap on both the road and the terrain, and hide the terrain so I can work on the road itself. To check the reference image, I switch to viewport shading. The texture is a bit blurry, so I measure the road width directly from the map. You might want to measure in multiple spots, but I'm keeping it simple for now. I set the road and edge width here, and leave the height at 5 centimeters. You can tweak the poly count if you want, but I'll stick with this setting to keep things optimized. Now I adjust the borderline width and hide everything except the lines, then I start tracing the road shape. To make the lines easier to see, I change their color to red. You can tweak the imported curve directly if you want, but I prefer to trace the road again from scratch. It gives me more control over the point placement. Once I'm done tracing, I reconnect the line texture and re-enable the shrink wrap modifier. For proper UV control, it's important that your mapping node is set to default values. Then, in the modifier, you can fine-tune the placement for both the road and the lines using the UV control panels. Let's unhide the terrain now and scale it properly. It's very important that the faces are roughly square shaped. This helps triangulation work correctly. Also, remember to set the origin to geometry. Once you enable the node group, you should see something like this. Now I'll hide the reference object, switch to solid mode, and enable wireframe view. Then I turn the shrink wrap modifier back on and start adjusting the geometry. If your terrain is large, it's a good idea to subdivide it further in edit mode before moving on. To clean up some of these artifacts, I slightly adjust the merge distance. If you're not seeing enough of your terrain, you can also play with the delete far value. But in my case, this distance works fine. I don't need all this geometry, so I reduce the subdivision distance to keep things lighter. You might notice artifacts near the edges of the terrain that usually happens when the reference ends too close to the edge. Leaving a bigger margin solves that. Now I check the road, and if I see any unwanted bumps, I fine-tune the Z-smooth value to flatten things out. Next. I'll enable the guide post group along with the curves from the road modifier. Then I adjust the post width and set the spacing to 50 meters. To create guardrails, I start by duplicating the road, renaming it, and hiding the original just to get a better view. Then I disable everything except the side curves and convert the road to a mesh. Now I've got a road with mesh lines along both sides. Next, 
I create vertex groups for the guardrails and the arrow signs. I assign the points, but I'm not seeing any rails appear. Let's check the assigned objects. Yep, that's the issue. We need to assign the new road object here. Now the rails are showing up, I'll adjust their placement, height, and spacing. We'll fix the overlapping posts a bit later. I duplicate the road again, rename it, and disable everything except the main curve, since that's what I want to keep this time. Then I convert it to a mesh and move the line slightly above the road surface. Next, I select the line group and assign the road object to shrink wrap the line onto it. To keep things simple in this tutorial, I'll just use the dashed line. Other line types were covered in the previous video. For the line to actually show up, I need to set the segment length. There are trees along the road I'm recreating, and it's actually really easy to set them up using the guide posts group. Just like before, I duplicate the road, rename it, and disable everything we don't need. It might seem like we should use the side curves, but in this case, it's actually the main curve we need. I convert it to a mesh to apply the group and then convert it back to a curve, since that's what the setup requires. Now I disable stacking, select my tree instance, set the width, and that's it. Trees are done. Let's also create those background trees. For that, I duplicate the terrain, rename it, and add the tree group. Then I assign the road object and start adjusting the placement until it looks right. To actually see the trees, I switch the group to instance mode. I don't like how flat the terrain looks, so I'll add a displacement modifier to the reference terrain. To make it work better, I subdivide the terrain more around the road. Just keep in mind, this might introduce some unwanted elevation to your track. To keep things quick here, I simply cranked up the Z smooth value on the road and moved on. Then, to make the terrain stand out a bit more, I tweak the flatten values. I'll add a few more guardrails now. Here you can see what happens when the road object isn't assigned in the group. When I change the radius, the rails no longer follow the road properly. Same thing happens with camber, so it's important to assign the road object. If you want to add some elevation changes, you can just edit the reference terrain directly. Now I want to add some bushes in front of the trees. I simply duplicate the tree object and tweak the values a bit to get the look I want. To export everything into the game, I first duplicate the blend file so I can keep all the groups unapplied. Then I delete all the original objects and use the collections to organize my new ones. I'll start with the terrain. I enable the split by index function and set the point count to 60,000. Looks like this terrain only needs to be split into two parts, so I might as well set the number somewhere in the middle. Then I rename it so the game knows which surface it is. I duplicate the terrain and set the second one to show the other half, then convert both to mesh. Perfect, let's do the guard rails next. I duplicate the rails to create a separate collider object. Again, naming is important here. I don't need to split anything this time, so I just convert both to mesh. Uh, if you don't see the posts after applying, you probably forgot to check Realize Instances, just like I did. Now it's alright. Let's look at the roadside trees now. I could just convert them to mesh and move on, but I'd like to use 3D trees in my map. For that, I create a simple vertex and use it as the instance object.
Then I convert it to mesh and adjust the placement where needed. I'll hide them for now and export them later along with the other trees. The guide post group is stacked on top of my road modifier. To separate it, I duplicate the road and rename it. Then I disable the road mesh but keep both curve outputs on. The rails have already been applied so now I can assign them in the post group to delete the overlapping posts. Again, realize instances, then convert to mesh. Now that it's applied, don't forget to delete the group from the road object so you don't end up with duplicates. The lines are easy, just check the settings, convert to mesh, and it's done. I'll quickly check the poly count and everything looks good. The tree group uses the road object, so let's export the trees before applying the road. I set the group to export mode and convert it to mesh. For some reason, I don't see the points until I jump into edit mode and back, and then they show up. I'll do the same for the bushes, then export each tree group as a separate .pcd file. This file is used in AC foliage to place the 3D trees. I'll link the tutorial in the description. Finally, I can apply the road modifier. I didn't really use much geometry, so my road doesn't need splitting. The process would be the same as with the terrain earlier. I simply convert it to mesh, then select the border lines by material and separate them. At this point, I also delete the reference terrain and hide all the instances. Before exporting everything, there are a couple of steps to take care of. The UV map doesn't really exist for the road and border lines since both were generated from curves. You can see the rails work fine because they used a mesh line as input. To fix this, I go to the Data tab, find my UV map under Attributes, and click Convert Attribute. It's important to use these settings and hit Convert. The UVs show up here and you can see it works as expected. I'll do the same thing for the road now. You can now edit the UV map further if needed, just like with any other mesh. I'll also create a UVs for the terrain since the node group doesn't unwrap the mesh properly. I change the texture projection from box back to flat and connect the UV coordinates. Set the tiling and it's done. Now let's check the face orientation. I see some red, so I just press Shift plus N in edit mode to recalculate the normals. Next, I make sure each object has only one material assigned. Now I place the empties for the start and finish lines, pit stops, and hot lap start. The Z to axis should face forward and Y should be pointing up. I'll link a page in the description where the naming is properly explained. Finally, I hide the empties and trees, select all objects, press Ctrl A, and apply all transforms. Everything's now ready to export the FBX. The trees are already exported, so I just hide the collection. Now's a good time to double check if you didn't forget to name everything properly. Once that's done, you can export everything as FBX. Just make sure you're using the correct export settings. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped you get a better idea of how to start building tracks in Blender using the AC Track tools. Before I wrap up, I wanted to quickly show you some progress on the intersection tool. I figured out a way to make roads connect smoothly, even at an angle, which I'm pretty happy about. The UVs are also behaving nicely and everything seems to work well on flat surfaces. Right now I'm working on getting it to handle elevation changes properly, and once that's sorted I'll include it in the next version of AC Track Tools. Thanks a lot for watching. If you found the video helpful, feel free to leave a like or comment. See you in the next one.